Self-propelled or guided missile is a self-propelled precision guided munition system, as opposed to an unguided self. Propelled munition, referred to as a rocket, missiles have four system components, targeting and or missile guidance, flight system, engine, and warhead. Missiles come in types adapted for different purposes, surface-to-surface -surface and air-to-surface missiles, ballistic, cruise, anti-ship, anti- tank, etc., surface-to-air missiles, and anti-ballistic, air-to-air missiles, and anti-satellite weapons, all known existing missiles are designed to be propelled during powered flight by chemical reactions inside a rocket engine, jet engine, or other type of engine, non-self-propelled airborne. Explosive devices are generally referred to as shells and usually have a shorter range than missiles. In ordinary British English usage predating guided weapons, a missile is any thrown object, such as objects thrown at players by rowdy spectators at a sporting event. Etymology and usage The word missile comes from the Latin verb mita, meaning to send. In military usage, munitions projected towards a target are broadly categorized as follows. A powered, guided munition that travels through the air or space is known as a missile, or a guided missile. A powered, unguided munition is known as a rocket. Unpowered munitions not fired from a gun are called bombs whether guided or not. Unpowered, guided munitions are known as guided bombs or smart bombs. Munitions that are fired from a gun are known as projectiles whether guided or not. If explosive, they are known more specifically as shells or mortar bombs. Powered munitions that travel through water are called torpedoes. An older usage includes fixed torpedoes which might today be called mines. Hand grenades are not usually classed as missiles. A common further subdivision is to consider ballistic missile to mean a munition that follows a ballistic trajectory and cruise missile to describe a munition that generates lift similar to an airplane. Early development The first missiles to be used operationally were a series of missiles developed by Nazi Germany in World War II, most famous if. These are the V-1 flying bomb and V-2 rocket, both of which used a simple mechanical autopilot to keep the missile flying along a pre-chosen route. Less well known were a series of anti-shipping and anti-aircraft missiles, typically based on a simple radio control command guidance system directed by the operator. However, these early systems in World War II were only built in small numbers. Technology-guided missiles have a number of different system components, targeting and or missile guidance, flight system, engine, warhead, guidance systems, main article, missile guidance. Missiles may be targeted in a number of ways. The most common method is to use some form of radiation, such as infrared, lasers or radio waves, to guide the missile onto its target. This radiation may emanate from the target, such as the heat of an engine or the radio waves from an enemy radar. It may be provided by the missile itself, such as a radar, or it may be provided by a friendly third party, such as the radar of the launch vehicle, platform, or a laser designator operated by friendly infantry. The first two are often known as fire and forget as they need no further support to control from the launch vehicle, platform in order to function. Another method is to use a TV guidance, using either visible light or infrared, in order to see the target. The picture may be used either by a human operator who steers the missile onto its target or by a computer doing much the same job. One of the more bizarre guidance methods instead used a pigeon to steer the missile to its target. Many missiles use a combination of two or more of the above methods to improve accuracy and the chances of a successful engagement. Targeting systems Another method is to target the missile by knowing the location of the target and using a guidance system such as INS, TERCOM or satellite guidance. This guidance system guides the missile by knowing the missile's current position and the position of the target, and then calculating a course between them. This job can also be performed somewhat 
crudely by a human operator who can see the target in the missile and guide it using either cable or radio-based remote control, or by an automatic system that can simultaneously track the target and the missile. Furthermore, some missiles use initial targeting, sending them to a target area where they will switch to primary targeting, using either radar or IR targeting to acquire the target flight system whether a guided missile uses a targeting system, a guidance system or both, it needs a flight system. The flight system uses the data from the targeting or guidance system to maneuver the missile in flight, allowing it to counter inaccuracies in the missile or to follow a moving target. There are two main systems, vectors thrust for missiles that are powered throughout the guidance phase of their flight, and aerodynamic maneuvering, wings, fins, canard, aeronautics, etc. Engine main articles, rocket engine, jet engine, solid fuel rocket and liquid propellant rocket missiles are powered by an engine, generally either a type of rocket engine or jet engine. Rockets are generally of the solid fuel type for ease of maintenance and fast deployment, although some larger ballistic missiles use liquid propellant rockets. Jet engines are generally used in cruise missiles, most commonly of the turbojet type. Due to its relative simplicity and low frontal area, turbofans and ramjets are the only other common forms of jet engine propulsion, although any type of engine could theoretically be used. Missiles often have multiple engine stages, particularly in those launched from the surface. These stages may all be of similar types or may include a mix of engine types minus for example, surface launched cruise missiles often have a rocket booster for launching in a jet engine for sustained flight. Some missiles may have additional propulsion from another source at launch. For example, the V-1 was launched launched by a catapult, and the MGM-51 Shilila was fired out of a tank gun using a smaller charge than would be used for a shell. Warhead Main Article Warhead Missiles generally have one or more explosive warheads, although their weapon types may also be used. The warheads of a missile provide its primary Destructive power. Many missiles have extensive secondary destructive power due to the high kinetic energy of the weapon and unburnt fuel that may be on board. Warheads are most commonly of the high explosive type, often employing shaped charges to exploit the accuracy of a guided weapon to destroy hardened targets. Other warhead types include submunitions, incendiaries, nuclear weapons, chemical, biological or radiological weapons or kinetic energy penetrators. Warheadless missiles are often used for testing and training purposes. Basic roles missiles are generally categorized by their launch platform and intended target. In broadest terms, these will either be surface, ground or water, or air, and then subcategorized by range and the exact target type, such as anti-tank or anti-ship. Many weapons are designed to be launched from both surface or the air, and a few are designed mind to attack either surface or air targets, such as the ADATS missile. Most weapons require some modification in order to be launched from the air or surface, such as adding boosters to the surface launch version, surface to surface, air to surface main articles, surface to surface missile and air to surface missile, ballistic main article, ballistic missile after the boost stage. Ballistic missiles follow a trajectory mainly to determined by ballistics. The guidance is for relatively small deviations from that. Ballistic missiles are largely used for land attack missions, although normally associated with nuclear weapons. Some conventionally armed ballistic missiles are in service, such as MGM-140 ATACMS. The V-2 had demonstrated that a ballistic missile could deliver a warhead to a target city with no possibility of interception and the introduction of nuclear weapons meant it could efficiently do damage when it arrived. The accuracy of these systems was fairly poor, but post-war development by most military forces improved their 
basic inertial navigation system concept to the point where it could be used as the guidance system on intercontinental ballistic missiles flying thousands of kilometers. Today, the ballistic missile represents the only strategic deterrent in most military forces, however, some ballistic missiles are being adapted for conventional roles, such as the Russian Iskander or the Chinese EF-21D anti-ship ballistic missile. Ballistic missiles are primarily surface launched from mobile launches, silos, ships or submarines, with air launch being theoretically possible with a weapon such as the cancelled Skybolt missile, the Russian Topolem SS-27 Sickle B, is the fastest 7,320 meters per second missile currently in service. Cruise missile main article Cruise missile the V-1 had been successfully intercepted during World War II, but this did not make the cruise missile concept entirely useless. After the war, the U.S. deployed a small number of nuclear-armed cruise missiles in Germany, but these were considered to be of limited usefulness. Continued research into much longer-ranged and faster versions led to the U.S.'s ZM-64 Navajo and its Soviet counterparts, the Buran and Buran cruise missile. However, these were rendered largely obsolete by the ICBM, and none were used operationally. Shorter range developments have become widely used as highly accurate attack systems, such as the U.S. Tomahawk missile, the Russian KH-55, the German KAPD-350, and the Pakistani Baba cruise missile, the BrahMos cruise missile, which is a joint venture between India and Russia, is different in this class, as it is a supersonic cruise missile that can travel much faster than other cruise missiles, which are subsonic cruise missiles are generally associated with land attack operations, but also have an important role as anti-shipping weapons. They are primarily launched from air, sea or submarine platforms in both roles. Although land-based launchers also exist, anti-ship main article, anti-ship missile Another major German missile development project was the anti-shipping class, such as the Fritz X and Henschel H's 293, intended to stop any attempt at a cross-channel invasion. However, the British were able to render their systems useless by jamming their radios, and missiles with wire guidance were not ready by D-Day. After the war, the anti-shipping class slowly developed and became a major class in the 1960s with the introduction of the low-flying jet or rocket-powered cruise missiles known as C. Skimmers. These became famous during the Falklands War, when an Argentine Exocet missile sank a Royal Navy destroyer. A number of anti-submarine missiles also exist. These generally use the missile in order to deliver another weapon system such as a torpedo or depth charge to the location of the submarine, at which point the other weapon will conduct the underwater phase of the mission. Anti-tank main article. Anti-tank guided missile by the end of World War II, all forces had widely introduced unguided rockets using high-explosive anti-tank warheads as their major anti-tank weapon. C. Panzerforst, bazooka, however, these had a limited useful range of 100 meters or so, and the Germans were looking to extend this with the use of a missile, using wire guidance, the X-7. After the war, this became a major design class in the later 1950s and, by the 1960s, had developed into practically the only non-tank anti-tank system in general use. During the 1973 Yom Kippur War between between Israel and Egypt, the 9M14 Maliukka, aka Saga, man portable anti tank missile proved potent against Israeli tanks. While other guidance systems have been tried, the basic reliability of wire guidance means this will remain the primary means of controlling anti-tank missiles in the near future. Anti-tank missiles may be launched from aircraft vehicles or by ground troops in the case of smaller weapons. Surface-to-air anti-aircraft main article. Surface-to-air missile by 1944. U.S. and British Air Forces 
We're sending huge air fleets over occupied Europe, increasing the pressure on the Luftwaffe day and night fighter forces. The Germans were keen to get some sort of useful ground-based anti-aircraft system into operation. Several systems were under development, but none had reached operational status. Before the war's end, the U.S. Navy also started missile research to deal with the kamikaze threat. By 1950, systems based on this early research started to reach operational service, including the U.S. Army's MIM-3 Nike Jacks and the Navy's 3Ts, Talis, Terrier, Tata, soon followed by the Soviet S-25 Berkut and S-75 Divina and French and British systems. Anti-aircraft weapons exist for virtually every possible launch platform, with surface launch systems ranging from huge, self-propelled or ship-mounted launches to man portable systems, anti-ballistic main article, anti-ballistic missile like most missiles, the Arrow missile, S-300, S-400 missile, advanced air defense and MIM-104 Patriot are for defense against short-range missiles and carry explosive warheads. However, in the case of a large closing speed, a projectile without explosives is used. Just a collision is sufficient to destroy the target. See Missile Defense Agency for the following systems being developed. Kinetic Energy Interceptor, KAI, Aegis Ballistic Missile Defense System, Aegis BMD, Anad M3 missile with a lightweight exo-atmospheric projectile, leap, kinetic warhead, KW, air 2, air main article, air to air missile, Soviet RS-82 rockets were successfully tested in combat at the Battle of Kharkin Gol in 1939, German experience in World War II demonstrated that destroying a large aircraft was quite difficult, and they had invested considerable effort into air-to-air -air missile systems to do this. Their Messerschmitt Mi-262's jets often carried R-4M rockets, and other types of bomber-destroyer aircraft had unguided rockets. As well, in the post-war period, the R-4M served as the pattern for a number of similar systems, used by almost all interceptor aircraft during the 1940s and 1950s, lacking guidance systems. Such rockets had to be carefully aimed at relatively close range to hit the target successfully. The United States Navy and U.S. Air Force began deploying guided missiles in the early 1950s, most famous being the U.S. Navy's AIM-9 Sidewinder and the USAF's AIM. For Falcon, these systems have continued to advance, and modern air warfare consists almost entirely of missile firing. In the Falklands War, less powerful British Harriers were able to defeat faster Argentinian opponents using AIM-9G missiles provided by the United States as the conflict began. The latest heat-seeking designs can lock onto a target from various angles, not just from behind, where the heat signature from the engines is strongest. Other types rely on radar guidance, either on board or painted by the launching aircraft. Air-to-air -air missiles also have a wide range of sizes, ranging from helicopter-launched self-defense weapons with a range of a few kilometers, to long-range weapons designed for interceptor aircraft aircraft such as the R-37 missile, anti-satellite main article, anti-satellite weapon in the 1950s and 1960s. Soviet designers started work on an anti-satellite weapon, called the Istabitel Sputnik, which literally means interceptor of satellites, or destroyer of satellites, after a lengthy development process of roughly 20 years. It was finally decided that testing of the Istabitel Sputnik be cancelled. This was when the U.S. started testing their own systems. The brilliant Pebbles defense system proposed during the 1980s would have used kinetic energy collisions without explosives. Anti-satellite weapons may be launched either by an air